26 is our 10 year strategy, which we've been jointly working on with the Scottish Police Authority for the last nine months. And it describes the sort of service that we need to build to keep Scotland safe into the future. So it's looked at the sort of demands that we know are upon us now, what we can reasonably predict, and how do we organise ourselves to keep Scotland safe. We've just come to the end of the consultation and we've reflected on what people have said. So we've had really good engagement from across a whole range of stakeholders, internal and external, to test our thinking. And what that's told us is that what we offered in the strategy has broadly met with people's ambitions for the service and what they think Police Scotland should deliver for them and their communities. So we've refined that, we have adapted it and adjusted in places, but the major thrust is, in, is, is where we originally thought it would be. Uh, and that will now go and be laid before Parliament uh, this week. Uh, and if approved by the Police Authority on Thursday, that gives us the basis to move forward into implementation. It will give us a very clear plan for the next 10 years, and 10 years sounds a long time, but you know, we are starting now to develop the next three-year implementation plan, so over the next months and indeed years, staff and the public will see our service adopt and develop to meet the sorts of threats that we know we must organise ourselves around. So if we reflect on what's happened in the last few weeks, we've had dreadful terror attacks uh, in other cities across the UK that we've had to be able to respond and support and help colleagues uh, and we've also for instance seen the cyber attack on the NHS in Scotland so we will always need a presence in communities and we must maximise staff's efficiency and their ability to deliver what they want to deliver to those communities physically but also we need to recognise that the world of crime and terror is changing and we need to be able to protect people both in public spaces in private spaces and increasingly in the online environment where people spend more and more of their time. Well, at the moment we're putting together the three-year implementation plan for the first three years, so you're going to see us uh, adapting how we enable the public to make contact with us. So, making it easier for people to call on our services and for us to offer our services to them, both through telephony and other media that people want to use. You're also going to see us focusing on vulnerability, because we know a huge amount of our demand comes from people at points of crisis, so whether that be drink, drugs, mental health, uh, uh, the challenges of an ageing population are obvious examples. So how do we organise ourselves around the needs of the individual rather than ask them to organise themselves around us? Uh, and then the final piece probably this year is how do we ensure that our corporate functions, things like HR, IT, finance, the estates, are organised to deliver what a national service really needs so that we are as effective as we can be in what we call the back office and as much resource as possible is spent on frontline policing be that in public, private or virtual space, and we're as efficient as we can be in terms of how we provide those support services. I guess the last thing I want to say is a thank you. We've had huge levels of engagement both internally, you know, it's really obvious that staff and officers are keen to contribute to the future of the service that we all care so passionately about, but also the public and other stakeholders and other partners have offered us their views. Um, so, you know, it's a big thank you because actually we police by consent, we want to be relevant, we want to be legitimate in the communities that we serve, and that requires the public to engage with us, us to listen and adjust our service depending on what they need.